Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on of Linux and open source, anything else that kind of catches our eyes, right eyes, left eyes, the eyes in the middle, if you had an eye in the middle, what would you do, Joel? <laughs> if you woke up one morning and you're like, man, I got a third eye, this is weird. Oh, I would love that. I could see better. <laughs> you I could accidentally one. <laughs> poke your third eye out, be like, ah, third eye blind, oh no. <laughs> it's another fascinating week for Linux, everybody. We've got a bunch of fun stuff to talk mm -hmm. to you about. Yeah. I am playing around with a bunch of things. Uh, this is one of those Wednesdays that I, I, knew, I knew full well when I woke up this morning, it was Wednesday. But somewhere between then and about an hour before the show, my brain just checked out. I was working. I got three other projects that I got to get done. I was like, right, I got to do a show today. So yeah. I, I, I had to scramble, screeching in. And uh, we had a fun time at the beginning of the show because I'm trying to Mm -hmm. exploring email clients again, but we'll get on into that a bit later on. Then I'm trying to wrangle Firefox into trying to use Firefox more just so I can have a more yes. balanced opinion about it because yeah, that's me. That's me. If I'm, if I'm going to speak ill of anything or if I'm going to speak good of something, I want to make sure I use it. You know, I do not like mm -hmm. um, judging something from a place of ignorance because that is actual ignorance right there. You know, that's yeah. it's just being not very good. Playing around with a couple of things, though, uh, one of the more interesting things that I haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to do it. If you've ever had a ground loop issue in your audio, and I think a lot of people have, you just didn't know what it was called. You plug in like a USB audio interface or you'll plug something into your audio chain with your headsets, with your gaming microphone or just your regular microphone and it'll introduce that. And you'll hear that like hum. You're like, ah, what is that? Go away. It's horrible. It's bad. That's a problem with the mains. It's a problem with grounding when something has two different grounding sources. And there's a couple of different ways to get rid of it. And years ago, I did a video of like, hey, what works and what doesn't, you know, showing you what a ground uh, USB isolator was and, um, you know, actual mm -hmm. boxes to remove that. I got a big version of one of those boxes, not like a super big one, but a one that you could use for line level signals. And I think I might do a little video about it because it's kind of fun. It's kind of neat uh, how it works. Uh, maybe explaining to people how transformers work with audio and how the windings go together. Oh, that's cool. That would be cool, Vin. Could Might be borderline educational. Yeah. Who knows? We're using it right now. So there you go. Pretend you can hear something different in the audio because that's another thing I want to change. The main reason I want to do a video on it, Joe Bryant, <laughs> is because I had all of the questions, you know, this is a product that's been out, you know, six, seven years, right? Yeah. Common product. They've sold thousands of them. And I had like five or six serious questions. Like, does it do this? Does it do this? Does it do this? No one's answered it. Oh, okay. Can't yeah. find any information anywhere. <laughs> right. And like, does it come with an instructor manual? No. <laughs> it's just a sheet of cardboard that says, mm. there are some transformers in this thing. Have fun. Oh, boy. So maybe I'm going to do that. How about you? What are you up to? Oh, What's new I am with getting, your third eye? Yeah, getting ready for scale. In fact, this weekend at, at Strider's house in chat, creator of Elutris, we're having a Linux Gamecast party, watch, viewing party on Saturday night. So we will be there and we're going to make some plans for scale. Southern California Linux Expo, which is uh, coming up on March 9th through 12th of this year at the Pasadena Convention Center in Pasadena, California. <laughs> and you can actually use promo code CHIX for 50% off your scale registration. And you'll be able to find me at the Linux Chicks LA booth, number 234, the Tux Digital Destination Linux booth, and roaming around the Lutris booth too. <laughs> so I am going to be very, very, very busy and doing live, live streaming on top of that. So. It's going to be a very busy scale, but wonderful. <laughs> What's better than it being an incredibly boring scale? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully there's going to be a bunch of people showing up, and it's going to be a good time for everyone in yeah. involved. Now, mm -hmm. let's get right into this with something that falls into the probably should have been there at the start department. Yeah. So... Verified Flatpak apps are actually coming very soon. And Flatpak apps now have a verified badge icon, but only on the beta portal for now. This honestly is a great idea, especially with the greater adoption of Flatpak apps. 
And FlatHub and Flatpak packages, you know, are the future of Linux apps actually according to many people? And GNOME is continuing and they're to all wrong, Joe. <laughs> well, <laughs> GNOME is continuing to invest heavily in it. And even some of our our uh, uh, Ubuntu uh, derivatives like Pop! OS uh, use Flatpak um, in their software center. So it, it's becoming a thing. And uh, so GNOME has some very big plans to improve uh, Flatpaks too. And verification is actually a way to properly distinguish official apps from community builds and will be quite important for so many reasons, like for security and, and privacy. And it is a way to process and verify apps from first party teams instead of third or fourth party teams. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I've, I've actually been hearing some news since the end of last year when the FlatHub code was actually merged in the main branch on their GitHub page. And I was, you know, very happy that this is coming. And actually another thing GNOME wants to do is to give developers a way to collect donations and subscriptions too, which is also important to help make, make it more sustainable. I think this is a really great idea and there's like a ton of apps already available. We've got Firefox, Converter, Bottles, Abbey Word, OBS Studio, and Hex Chat are just a few of the verified apps already available. So the, this is this is wonderful. They they needed a verification uh, system, you know, so people trust it, <laughs> trust the product. <laughs> There's a couple problems with this, though. I mean, mm -hmm. um, again, this is kind of one of those things that probably should have been there to begin with, but. Mm -hmm. uh, 70 apps have currently been added to the verified list, which is nice. That's dope. I like seeing that. And developers, yeah. what do you got to do? Nothing too crazy. You got to link your account with a GitHub or GitLab. And that's how you get verified. Here's the problem, though. Here's the problem, Jill. Here's the problem, everybody listening. Mm. Unfortunately, Jim from Guitar Center can verify that he created a flat snap image pack for see you, see me. And, um, mm. It would say, yeah, it's verified. I'm like, but but he didn't create see you see me. I'm like, yeah, but yeah. you know, he's the packager, he did it. So uh and they ran into that like WhatsApp and things like that. True. Mm. It's not a perfect system. What it is is better than nothing though. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I don't absolutely. think we're going to be seeing a lot of rampant abuse for it, but yeah. Having a nice little check mark. And you know, when you're sitting there thinking about installing a flat pack, you know, getting ready to go. Man, I've made some poor life choices. I'm going to uh, install a containerized application on my desktop. Um, you, at least you'll have a check mark to know that it's verified. Yeah, absolutely. I don't approve of containerized desktop applications, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Vin's favorite is App Image, which honestly, that's my favorite <laughs> containerized platform. It, it's, it's the a, one that's been it's around a great the longest. Try before you buy. Like both Snaps yeah. and Flatpak start from a like end user hostile. I, like it, I, it, they're not a better experience yet. Yet, see, so yeah, I keep throwing yet in there because that slows people down. Because like, wow, I'm going to get angry at you, and I said, Aww. I said yet. I'm not saying it's impossible to make everything nice and smooth. It will get there. Yeah, it will. It will. It will. Now let's talk about Thunderbird. Yeah. So the Thunderbird email client has a major, major announcement. Thunderbird is now almost 20 years old. Wow. Right? <laughs> and they have decided to rebuild the Thunderbird user interface and backend from scratch. And as the developers get closer to this year's release of Thunderbird 115 Supernova, they were hearing a certain question more and more often. And the question was, why does Thunderbird look so old and why does it take so long to change? <laughs> Yeah, a lot of the community I'm just have had a look this. At, here's Thunderbird question. <laughs> Remember this? Yeah, yeah, Kinda man, you can you can get that love in Sea Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, Thunderbird is undergoing a massive rework from the ground up to get rid of the technical and interface debt accumulated over the past few years. 
simply adding stuff on top of a crumbling architecture is actually not sustainable and they can't keep ignoring it. So they're, you know, they're going to start reworking it and making a new user interface, which me and Ven both got to uh, test out <laughs> in the last few days. Oh, I've been trying to use it for the past couple of weeks. Yeah. What are, you, what are your thoughts about it, Ven? They're not good, Jill. That's why I'm letting you have it all the time you need here, because I'm, I'm <laughs> okay. not going to say to a lot of positive stuff in a minute. Oh, okay. Well, for me, it was a positive experience. It booted very quickly. Uh, for me, and I think the layout looks nice and modern. And this was, um, I actually installed the February 13th, um, uh, 111 nightly and tested it out with my Linux Gamecast email. And I really like the UI of the calendar tab and the tabbed layout in general, but I know Vin isn't a fan of it. Uh, but this is a work in progress, and I hope these things will be improved. It definitely does look cleaner and more modern, so I have to give it that. And it was really snappy. It booted fast. <laughs> Round Legos A are an abomination. Um, <laughs> taking a look at the blog.thunderbird.net, this post, all this you can find in our show notes. Let's go ahead and say this. Let's go ahead and say this. Um, mm -hmm. I praised and not praised Thunderbird over the years. You know, if I like something, I like it. And if I don't like something, I don't like it. I don't believe in cheerleading a product. That does more damage than anything I could ever say is to say something's not wrong. You know, the everything's fine. You've seen that comic before, Jill, mm -hmm. right? The little oh, dog yeah. sitting there sipping his coffee with a fire behind him. It's like, oh, yeah, everything's great, guys. So don't worry about it. Just ignore it. So let's get to what this is. Mm -hmm. Email desktop clients are not a growth market. Mm -hmm. They're not. True. This is this will be in perpetual <laughs> decline. There's not going to be a um, renaissance of email desktop clients. People are all of a sudden going to go back to doing this. They're not. Why? It's 2023. Where do you check your email 99% of the time, Jill? On your mobile device. Oh, on the web. Yeah, web-based clients. <laughs> I, I check <laughs> mine on my Android device. Yeah. Honest. Oh, even, you do? Okay. Yeah. If I get an email, where do, where do I see it first? I see it in a notification on a mobile device that's always going to be next to me. Yeah. <laughs> that's where I see my email. I'm like, oh, okay. And if it's long and drawn out and I got to bring, you know, pen and paper, the equivalent, I got to bring keyboard and mouse into this. Yeah, I'll open up my email client and I'll do that. Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> that's I, a I I don't prefer, I don't like notifications of my email because I get too many of them. <laughs> so I, I just usually, you know, even on uh, Android, I go into to my uh, Gmail account and or ProtonMail and just check it when I'm able. So you just disable the notifications for you? Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> too many. I mean, I sometimes have, have, have gotten a hundred in, in literally 10 minutes. <laughs> so. It's well, I understand you don't get much in the way of email if that's all you're getting. Yeah. <laughs> now, for the rest of us, that's how we get our email notifications these days. Yeah, that's how you cut abreast because you don't have a desktop computer. Yeah. You that, might have a true. laptop laying around. Maybe, <laughs> maybe a Chromebook. <laughs> so that's my point. Like, yeah. we're, we're not going to see. There, there's not, this is not a growth market email desktop clients. It's just not. That's reality. You got to face reality. And all that said, I love the Thunderbird project. You know I do. Mm -hmm. If I didn't love it, I wouldn't say anything about it. Yeah. To that, I want to say, please stop with the UI <laughs> redesign. Please. Just, no, don't, don't do this. Don't do this. It, it's, no. The new UI in Nightly, this has been about a week now that I've had to revert back to using Thunderbird Stable. It's that bad. Like I tried to live with it for a few days. I tried to find ways around it to make it, make it work for me. And it didn't. And it didn't. Um, which always leads me to think, why do we change things that work? What's the point behind this? What's the, what's the logic behind this? You know, and and again, I'm not talking about the underpinnings. I'm not talking about the scaffolding. I'm talking. I'm not talking about the foundation. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the user interface. 
I think we got that down. I think we got that figured out in 2023. And more importantly, I don't think UI is a fashion show at all, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just speaking for myself. I'd personally much rather have a UI that looks a little older. But it's comfortable. It's familiar. And it's something that you can use, as opposed to something that's trendy. Me and Jill even had this discussion before the show started. I brought up, and Jill said, well, it looks like Outlook. Like, yeah, everybody knows how to use Outlook. (laughs) It's familiar. It's not, oh, here's Linux. What, your first experience to Linux, give them something like a tiling window manager? Like, I don't want to use this. I don't know how it looks. It's all different. You're like, yes, but it's new. Like, go away. Give me something with a start menu. Maybe that would be a bit more familiar. So one of the big things in the UI is the way they've, you know, your regular IMAP email accounts, like say the Linux Gamecast accounts that I have set up, those are fine. My Google IMAP email accounts have to be fully expanded in order to see the inbox. Yeah. I have just the inbox and I have the billion other Google folders that are built in. Mm-hmm. That there's no option to hide. So I have to have all of those expanded. So there's this big, long, massive scroll wheel. Like Maybe, maybe you would be able to check your mail if you had everything collapsed, because I have enough email accounts to where I would typically keep everything collapsed. You'd be able to check your email address from the collapse menu. You can. No, you have to have it expanded. You have to go to your inbox, and that's where you see. Now, maybe the way around that is to use a combined mailbox. I was trying here. Like I got, I'm going to make this work so I can test it, and I still couldn't get that working. I mean, it, okay, it, a very long way around the issue, considering you broke something that was functional, and um, you know, the type of people who need a dedicated desktop email client in 2023. We need just that. We need that dedicated email client. We don't need the calendar. We don't need the messaging. We don't need the uh, bells. We don't need the whistles because we're, we're dying breed. We're limited. I dare you find me somebody under, under the age of 35. Even over the age of 35, mm-hmm. you bring up uh, you know, Outlook and stuff. I'm like, yeah, maybe for work. Speaking of Outlook, this is what people do need, though. They need proper working exchange support. Yeah, That's what that they is need. definitely, yeah. Then you can sync your calendars. Then your email and all, and you're not going to have to use the IMAP functionality with that exchange mm-hmm. moral of the story jill is um <laughs> i want yeah don't mess with you i please yeah well ven was saying before the show when we were talking about it that he preferred what uh the improvements that uh, thunderbird was doing with the the older uh gui and i i particularly like them too a lot <laughs> I, I'm I am actually surprised they totally uh changed the layout. <laughs> so it's really nice. So maybe maybe we could have both. <laughs> this is change for the ch- sake of change. This is what happens when you let designers yeah. sit around and go, hey, do something. They Let's start see designing. New. Yeah, this is the modern, fresh take on <laughs> guess what? You don't have a modern or fresh user base. All this does is anger and confuse existing users. Yeah, and like you were saying, it's a diminishing market, and the and the people that you're really you know, no catering kid. no to. no Jill, how dare you? This is going to get the kids to start using desktop. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you They're know, gonna, a lot of people who who want uh, better security, you know, are using standalone email clients. So that that's and, and that area you know people are becoming more concerned about that so maybe See, there this would is why be it's some important to get outside of our bubble the average person yeah. don't care. <laughs> i they know don't. so many linux users who use thunderbird and have to have for years like me and ven um again the average person gmail apple mail mm-hmm. that's it they yeah. couldn't tell you what an email like ssl encryption what no mm-mm, no yeah uh, whatever <laughs> I, I'm just not a fan of change for the sake of change. I want all the other stuff. I'm completely behind. Let's make it faster. Um, do the rewrite. Uh, keep being awesome. All that other fun stuff. Mm-hmm. Just don't. I don't know. I don't. It, it, 
it's one of those mixed messages. I wish them all the best. But yeah. just, let's just not redo the UI for the sake of redoing the UI. Who's asking for that? Who's asking for that? And again, and again, it's very easy to come out and say, but Vin, you're being old and uh, a curmudgeon. And I'm like, yes, but that's your user base. <laughs> yeah. And this might have something to do with, we've noticed in the last few years, like for instance, with Vivaldi, they're trying to do all the things like Firefox used to, you know, Thunderbird was integrated into Firefox. You mean, yeah, time. when they were going down the road yeah. that ultimately killed the project? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but that's kind of uh, trendy again. So to include, you know, chat and calendar and those kind of things. So I guess that's what they're thinking that their customers want, their users want. Mm-hmm. Um, like personally, like earlier, I, I talked about Sea Monkey. I use Sea Monkey. I like Sea Monkey for email, and it it is you know what the original Firefox was with the the all in one suite, you know, web design, email, chat, the whole thing. That was uh, still an un that, that was big, and it got bloated. You saw what happened with that by the time it got to like Communicator six point oh. It was just yeah, a nightmare it, to use. It became a memory hog. Yes, <laughs> I remember those days. <laughs> Doomed to always repeat the past is something I I like efficiency. Here's here's what I was doing before I dialed up Jill was um, installing claws. <laughs> I mean, I use Thunderbird, and you know, I I, I bounce around because I'm all all I'm doing is like looking for an alternative. Yeah. At this point, because I, mm-hmm. I worry about stuff like this. And, mm-hmm. you know, if you want to talk about like just old school, just, you know, get the job done. Claws is probably the right piece of kit for it. You know, nice. That's when, you know, if you're thinking about email, this is Claws. Yeah. What does it do? It does email. I'm like, well, what else do you, I do email, but can you, nope, just email. <laughs> just email. Yeah. And, um, Mm-hmm. It does boil down to, you know, after 20 years, till I think we've got the interface for email figured out. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> we do. I dare say we might not need a hot, fresh take on it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'd love to hear your feedback. Leave us a comment, YouTube video, uh, send us in some mail. I will gladly read off any pro and negative. Um, anything you got because I I love differing different <laughs> thoughts, you know. Yeah, like what? FX Boy says in chat, you want basic for email. We got Mutt, we got Squirrel Mail. <laughs> We've got lots of different options for basic, <laughs> but Mutt is also good too. That's a good application. Yeah, you always <laughs> get the person that's like, yeah, well, you know, you can uh, check your email <laughs> terminal. Do you check your email terminal? No. Okay then. Um. <laughs> It's also got to be usable yeah. and functional in 2023, which is another thing. Um, yeah. Like I, I'm always down with like differing in opinions and I'm always terrified of getting stuck in a bubble tech bubble, you know, at when I say, well, everybody, and what, what, it's too many p- times when I hear people say everybody, that means their circle of friends. I'm like, you got to get outside of your sphere there and realize that, we're we're an incredibly small minority. The average person is like, I don't know what's a Thunderbird. You know, you say Thunderbird to them, they're going to think it's alcohol or a car. Yeah, yeah, very true, <laughs> very true, Vin. <laughs> and it's so. just like you know, you know, on Android, I was I was thinking about this. One of the most popular is Canine Mail, mm-hmm. which I really like. And now you know, you brought they, that they up, have, and I had completely forgotten that Canine yeah. is now merged with the Thunderbird project and Mozilla. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's going to be interesting what they do with that. I'm hoping they keep that the same because I, I, I love it. I use it on a daily basis on my phone. I would like a, um, I, that I, I fully support as long as everything is going to be running. They keep everything nice and copacetic there because, you know, there, there's this imaginary dream world where I'd like to have a Google free Android experience that was usable and functional. Yeah. And that would be a big part of it, was having a good email client. So Mm -hmm. I wish them all the best on that. Yeah. All right. Me too. Now let's talk about something that is so far inside of our bubble. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) 
Woohoo! Congratulations, Ven. <laughs> Let's talk about DaVinci Resolve on Linux. But Ven, you've done that before multiple times. Yes, I have. I try to do one for every major version. This one's a little bit different, though, if you're watching the video version, because we're going to be doing it with a Radeon AMD Pro Drivers on Linux. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the wild and wacky world of DaVinci Resolve on Linux. We're going to try to walk you through setting up a workstation on an AMD GPU. In fact, I'm just going to use the APU, the 5600G that is in the rectangle box that I have set up. And you know what? Installing AMD binary drivers has been a joke since the ATI days, kids. Not the funny haha. -ha. No, 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 no. Like This is more like the OMG WTF BBQ type ways. It's always been a uh, show of sorts. And I wanted to see what it was like in 2023. And the difficulty multiplier was, yeah, I want to see if I can make May 5600G work with DaVinci Resolve, Blender, and all this other stuff, and which requires installing the Pro Drivers. I'm like, okay. And before we get started, I was joking around. I was thinking to myself, I need like time till Arch user shows up in the comments. And I think probably 45 minutes after this video went public, like, hey, this, this, we, we, we got a script on Arch that works with this. And I researched that and it was like two years ago and it worked with an older version of DaVinci Resolve. And the next comment was like, it's broke now. I'm like, oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> use at your own risk. Uh, but this will cover all the fun bits for um, setting a workstation using Ubuntu LTS because basically you got three options. You got three. I know this sounds weird. And this is not uh, Resolve's fault. You don't get to blame Resolve on this. You don't. This is an AMD thing. If you want to install the AMD Pro drivers, you can use an Ubuntu LTS, a very particular version, or you can use a version of Sless, Susie, mm -hmm. or you can use a RHEL. Yeah. Or, um, you know, this is like step one to installing drivers. Isn't it, isn't it a hard sell, Jill? Like, oh, I, I'm yeah. going to need you to format your computer. Yeah. <laughs> Now, I have a DaVinci 16 running on um, a CentOS box, but that box was already set up to run uh, Maya and 3D software, Maya, and uh, so it ran out of the box, but it was made to, to work with the um, AMD uh, closed source drivers and with animation programs. It was all set up for that. <laughs> so installing it yourself is going to give you... Hey, it's going to get you that knowledge base of in case you ever yeah. do want to set up a workstation. And this is taking about why do you need this in the first place? Because of compute, um, OpenCL drivers, the Rockham drivers are getting better. And there's just things you got to realize, you know, like make sure you're not running Wayland. And it's relatively straight forward. There's not a whole lot of things that are going to catch you. I give you the moon glyph command that you need to install the Vulkan and the OpenCL bits. And at the end of the day, it worked which was the like, big surprise. Awesome. Big surprise. You, you uh, had to uh, do the legacy uh, install for the, the drivers. I noticed that. There was one of the commands. Yes, you have to do yeah. the OpenCL. Well, I remember I, having I to did, do Joe, that is, <laughs> a while ago. I installed, you can install both. Yeah, cool. So you can do the rocker and the legacy stuff and also make sure you get your Vulkan Pro drivers in there and well. What I do want to do, and you've got to make sure that you've had, had your users to the video and the render group, and there's some, you know, bonus things you need for DaVinci Resolve as uh, applications, but everything else is pretty straightforward. The one thing that you do have to fight against is the um, window void of nothingness that shows up. I'm like, ah, oh, man, that's kind of bad. But at the end of the day, you get a discrete, and again, I did this on hard mode by using the, um, APU. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and Ben, I've been sharing the video around uh, to a lot of people who are interested in, in you know, using um, AMD GPUs. Oh, no, the only takeaway from that is <laughs> when you get them watching that video, the first thought any logical person should say is, I'm going to buy an NVIDIA card. Yeah, <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Again, if we're talking about workstations and setting stuff up, uh, DaVinci Resolve can be made. However, you know, I made that video because you know what? Maybe you already have an AMD card. Maybe you yeah. don't. <laughs> you're not out to like. That's not you're not setting up a dedicated workstation and you just yeah. want to make use of it. Now you can. There you go. Uh -huh. Plug that in. 
And then again, you, you might not want to because you know I, I want to yeah. go back and test like <laughs> gaming performance and stuff like that. Well, then I think this is cool because so people, you know, there are some people who work off their laptops and that are using APUs. And this is, you know, a perfect case for them, especially like students who need to do animation and this, you know, installing the, just installing the AMD closed source drivers is good for a lot of applications like Blender <laughs> and DaVinci and Maya. <laughs> so it's, uh, this is really awesome. And the fact that you included a really nice, uh, the web, your, your web link has the tutorial and, and of all the sauce and what goes to, goes into cutting and pasting in the command line and whatnot. So it's really nice. Well, I mean, if you're going to do a guide <laughs> job, you can't just go, yeah. drivers go burr. Yeah. <laughs> I, I kid you not. That is the other, if you look up uh, how to install AMD uh, DaVinci Resolve with AMD GPU Pro drivers, this guy does like just this mystery cut mm -hmm. from the beginning to the, now look, everything's working all of a sudden. Like it doesn't work like that. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what they're trying to pull off, but there you go. Get out there, make something awesome, as I always say at the end of those videos, and just enabling people mm -hmm. to get stuff done. Yeah. If you want to help us get stuff done, you can do that by becoming a patron. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. See, I just slid into that segue. That's right. We got a bunch of membership levels that get you access to different things at different reward tiers, up to and including access to our Discord, where we're hanging out the other six days of the week. Extra live and uncut versions of these shows. You're listening to this. You're like, man, that's about 30, 40 minutes. Usually it's like an hour and a half, two hours, a bunch of bonus material, mm -hmm. access to things like that video. Like, Hey, I put stuff like that up a little bit early. I'm like, Hey, take a, take a snake peek at it. Do you like that? All right. Get it out there. It's a good way to help QA things, access to our show notes, et cetera, et cetera. We do thank you for your support. You can also head over to LinuxTeamCast.com, smash that support button. We have a store, we have PayPal, we got studio wish list. Jill's got a wish list. Mm -hmm. everything. You can imagine, but most importantly, if you get a chance, share the show, tell a friend, tell a cat, tell a dog, tell a marsupial, if you dare, and we'll yeah. be forever in your <laughs> debt. All right. Uh, we uh -huh. do need to thank David. Yeah. Now, here's why I want to thank David. I got a notification, I think maybe on Monday, get a notification if anybody ever increases their pledge, and I always bring it up. I'm like, if you're going to do that, I'm like, ooh, I'm going to publicly embarrass you. And I'm, I, I, I didn't get a note or anything with that. And I happened to read a comment on Linux Gamecast from David. And David, this is, hey, man, I upped my pledge because you brought up MCP pants. Mm. <laughs> Jill, awesome. are you, Jill, are you going to pretend to know who MCP pants is? <laughs> no. <laughs> I've heard I've heard you say the name, but I don't remember. Ah, <laughs> uh, Jill. <laughs> this this is MCP pants. Oh 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 okay yeah <laughs> okay now I see the visuals. <laughs> the spider with the diaper. <laughs> yes. <laughs> MCP pants is a very famous rapper. <laughs> Beastwick, first one to get it. All right, Aqua Teen for Aqua life, Teen baby. Hunger Force, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, we were talking about one of the games from Next Fest. Next Fest is going on right now. Go check out, uh, the, you can sort it by Linux demos, too, and upcoming Linux titles. Uh, go through that. Oh, speaking of that, as a patron, you can come hang out with us on uh, Tuesdays and Fridays for our track mania. I had another person write in and comment to the show, Joe. Um, um said yeah you know what games are really good you know especially at our age that you know it's good that we find something active to do right oh yeah keep our minds busy right and reflexes yeah. and all that like consider it even if you don't like playing video games consider it medicine for your reflexes yeah what, what we're up to on tuesdays and fridays you know outside of the community aspect of it give it a try don't knock it to you try it, even if you're not into racing games because we got people that are absolutely not into racing games that, like okay this is fun this is physics especially when you break out portal rpg maps and stuff like that and as a group we're trying to figure out what to do good time had by all but thank you david yeah who's a new executive producer awesome thank you so much david super awesome um it crashed the vivaldi window <laughs> oh my goodness 
<laughs> David got David. No. Yeah. <laughs> Aquatine. I'm thinking of Aquatine now. <laughs> you showed the image. <laughs> what the, French that's fry a, guy. What, Frylock? Yeah. French fry guy? Yeah, that's what they called him in one of the episodes, Frylock. <laughs> Who are the other characters, Joe Bryan? Oh, I don't. It's been uh-huh. so long. See, that's that's why I didn't remember the name of the spider with the diaper, because it's been a <laughs> I haven't seen it since it originally aired, so it's I need still to go airing. back and watch those. Oh yeah, yeah. They got a movies new series coming out. Yeah, um, I know. Yeah, that's great. Uh, that that thing's been around for a long, long time. So's Debian, and you can put it on your brand new Star Five Vision Five Two Risk Five SBC. Kinda. I want to say kind of on this because uh, this comes from CNX Software. They get a hold of one. This was a project that was kickstarted, and this just might not be 100% ready for production. But we're talking about the, this is the Quad Core RIS-5. It was kickstarted last year, and they said to him, hey, here's the board. You want to play around with it? He decided to try to put Debian 12 air quotes onto mm-hmm. it because, you know, Debian 12 is <laughs> not out yet. Not Debian testing. And getting the critter uh, to boot is an adventure that required updating the SPL and U-Boot bootloader. I mean, we're talking like early days of like old, old times with the Raspberry Pi. First boot took about three minutes. NVMe actually works, but it's only getting about 100 megabytes a second right now. So that might need a little bit of work. Audio works. And when I say audio works, the 3.5 millimeter jack works, not the HDMI audio. That doesn't work quite yet. And documentation is a wee difficult to track down because it's smattered across multiple message boards in English and Chinese. However, if you want that old school, you know, early day experience, you know, and you want to play around with um, Risk Five, mm-hmm. this is how you do it. You know, yeah. if this, if what I just said made you go, man, that'd probably be pretty fun to play with over the weekend, and it didn't make you go, ooh. Yeah, no, not at all. Maybe give it a look because this thing's only seventy bucks, Joe Run. Yeah, and it was a hundred and ten, I think, on Amazon. Oh yeah, if you want to pay the Amazon scalpy price. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. Know. Like I, I'm, I'm down with stuff like this. Uh, Vision Five Two, and these are shipping. Uh, the GPIO is a little wonky. I mean, everything, everything. Okay, a little wonky. There you go. There's the mm-hmm. disclaimer for. Everything as we're scrolling through audio things, uh, they got some benchmarks. You know, it technically runs. You don't. You buy this is a tinkerboard, seventy dollars yeah, forty cents absolutely. plus shipping. If you want to get it from um, All Technica from China, and yeah, one hundred and twelve with a Wi Fi version. So mm-hmm. mm, we're gonna get yeah. more and more. It's gonna be a while before we start seeing. Um, I and I've said this before. Before we start seeing a uh, Risk V. Uh, CPUs that you're going to want to use. <laughs> and it's going to be a while. Yeah, and this this is a great way to to start tinkering with it too. Mm-hmm. You know, the the Linux Risk Five is is still you know pretty new and still in development. But from a video graphics point of view, you know this it, it should be expected. It, it's like what's going on with the uh, M1 and M2 chips with Apple. So things are developing, but it, 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 it took a while. And then now it's all of a sudden, especially with the M1 and M2s, it's, it's picked up. <laughs> when we see an architecture like this, especially when you get a new architecture like uh, Risk Five, it's a good time to get in on the ground floor because you're going to learn a lot of stuff you otherwise wouldn't. Yeah. Absolutely. Learning how to get one of these bootstrapped and loaded and eventually into some type of X session, you're going to pick up so much extra data. Uh-huh about so many extra things. And this is one of the beautiful things about Linux over the years. I've lost count. Uh, It doesn't happen as much today as it used to because things are so refined and easy these days, which is why I roll my eyes sometimes when people say, Linux is so confusing and fragmenting. I'm like, you have no idea. (laughs) You have no idea what it used to be like, man. You were there. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Spent hours and hours compiling kernels. (laughs) And getting, you know, doing, uh, installing drivers, doing Insomod and getting sound cards working. <laughs> that was a thing. <laughs> or just the very simple thing of like, I'm trying to get this one thing working. 
And in the yeah. process of trying to figure out that one thing, I have to learn these four other things. Mm-hmm. So you end up with a really good, like really good foundational knowledge. And this is a good, good time to get in on something like this. Uh, yeah, definitely. Not only is, is it teaching you how Linux works, it's, uh, you know, you're learning compatibility with Risk Five architecture. Hmm? Awesome. You get to play around with it. Yeah, and it's cheap enough now to play around with. <laughs> That's the big deal. <laughs> Seventy bucks, and you yeah. know, all of Vision Five stuff <laughs> is on their GitHub repo. They are awesome. So if you want to go play around with it, I mean, it's all there. Um, all the craziness. Like this is a hey, if you need a hobby, go pick one of these up. This will mm-hmm. probably get you good. This will probably get you. All right, we got to get out of here. All right. 40 minutes, 37 seconds, just in time to roll some credits. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for showing up. Thanks for hanging out with us. And we will see you next week. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thus concludes episode 364. (laughs) We will see you next week. Until then, get out there. Do some fun. Yes. Bye-bye. Yay! Bye. Love you. (laughs) Oh, my God.